Hello YouTube and welcome back to another Toddy Walnuts update video and this is going to be part two and I still have quite a few things on the bed but we're gonna blaze through this here I got a couple of Scream Factory titles I picked up a couple of or a few out-of-print titles um, I got a really cool documentary I want to share with you guys I do have a little stack of Disney movies that I'm going to save for the end in case uh, people don't want to stick around for that. And I have a little stack here of figures, horror figures, and I'll show those near the end before the Disney stuff. But the first thing I want to show is an album. This is an original vinyl soundtrack from the first three Friday the 13th original motion picture. And you get uh, Friday the 13th, part one, two, and three. And this record came out back in 1982. So it's almost 40 years old. And it still has a little sticker, which I really like. It says marketed by Polygram Classics. It's just a, a black vinyl, so I'm not gonna pull it out but this is just another kind of a grail piece, I guess, for the Friday the 13th collection that I have. And this one was on my radar for, I would say about three years, and this is a pretty pricey record. But I finally found one that was in the condition that I want. I'm pretty picky about my stuff. So it's gotta be as close to mint as possible for the right price, and I struck gold here, I think, on this one, so I had the right price, the right condition, so it's now in my collection. Just to kind of check that image there on the front, it's supposed to kind of resemble the red and blue of the 3D glasses, I guess. So I'm really, really stoked to have that in the collection. I did pick up a couple of Scream Factory titles. And these are kind of uh, Hammer films. Um, the first one here is called The Devil Rides Out. It says, The Beauty of Woman, The Demon of Darkness, The Unholy Union of the Devil's Bride. And this one stars Christopher Lee there. And this is a new 2K scan of the film. I really love these. These Hammer films, they have a, a really creepy vibe to them, and they always have really nice set pieces and excellent acting. There's the reversible cover. And I picked up the Brides of Dracula Collector's Edition with the slipcover. flipped that cover already and there you can see Peter Cushing on the front as kind of a Van Helsing type character it says superbly acted and featuring lush colors and wonderful sets I couldn't have said it better that's exactly why I like these type of movies the standout hammer horror is a classic all on its own be curious to hear if any of you have seen this movie and what you think of it. This is also a 2K scan. It has a bunch of bonus features. And then it has a reversible cover, which is also the same image that is on the slip cover. That's why I flipped it. So you can get the best of both worlds. I'll put that slip back on later. There's a couple of DVDs that I picked up and this was on my radar this was on my wish list on eBay for I would I would say maybe 10 years or close to 10 years and this is called Begotten uh, maybe some of you guys know about this movie it, it's ultra rare it's very pricey it's very hard to find but uh, I picked this up on eBay 
it was brand new when I bought it. And uh, you have to really beware of bootlegs. But this is this comes complete. It uh, has the booklet. There are a lot of bootlegs of this movie out there. So I was pretty leery when I bought this, but you know, you are protected as a buyer on eBay through PayPal. So if there would have been any, you know, uh, if I felt like I was getting scammed, see it's a silver disc, it's not a uh, burned copy, I would have just got a refund. But I was really glad to add this very ultra rare this is probably one of the most rare dvds you can find begotten it's a black and white film and i, I think it's a silent film too but uh yeah i'm glad to finally have that in the collection and then this one um, this one was a low budget film i don't know if it's out of print or not but it's, it's pretty hard to find i don't think it was very widely released this is called the creature from lake michigan and many of you know that i live in the state of wisconsin and i live right on the lake and i do a lot of live streams in the summertime and i take a walk down by the lake it's one of my favorite things about the state of wisconsin is lake michigan and i think it's a it's a gem and i wish we took care better care of it um, but I wanted to add this to the collection just for the fact that it's about Lake Michigan and I, I don't think it's gonna be a very good movie and I think it's kind of a you can tell on the back it's kind of a comedy spoof of kind of like a lake neck Loch Ness monster on the lake and you can see there's some kind of weird dance routine going on and I have a feeling this is pretty much just an amateur type movie and it's probably local folks who did it and that's why it's kind of hard to find but if you look on eBay if you're interested I'm sure you can find this I think I got it for like 10 bucks 12 bucks something like that and to stay on the Lake Michigan theme this is released by Arrow Video and this is again it's um, from what I hear and I have not watched this yet it's a, it's a horror comedy and it's more it leans more towards the comedy it's called Lake Michigan monster it would be really cool if somebody did a horror movie about Wisconsin or in Wisconsin or about Lake Michigan and, and, and kept it a legit horror movie I think that would be pretty awesome not really into the horror comedy that much I just wanted to get it for the fact that it's a movie about Lake Michigan and I know that they also filmed this one in black and white and you can see it does have a bunch of special features. I'm not gonna go through them all if you wanna pause that, you can. I thought that tagline at the top was pretty funny. It says banned in four lakes because of course there's five great lakes, Lake Michigan being one of them, and it was banned in the other four, so I thought that was pretty funny. But I flipped the cover already and it does come with a booklet. It comes with a advertising card like they always do not really going to go through the booklet I'll just kind of flip through and we'll keep this rolling this box set I was really happy to get this box set I pre-ordered it when it when it was first announced and due to the fact that mail is still very slow because of you know the circumstances that we're living in now not going to talk about it I had the tracking number for this and it was literally sitting in a Chicago post office for one month before it was sent to my house so it took a very long time for this to actually get to me but I'm glad you know I'm, I'm patient and it came in perfect condition and these are the films of William Griffay and it's called he came from the swamp and uh, Griffay is he's still with us he's a uh, I believe he's in his 90s he lives in Florida and most of the films that he ever made were filmed in Florida uh, actually I think every film in this box set was filmed in Florida except for the one that I just watched the other night which was called Whiskey Mountain I think that was filmed in North Carolina and it was pretty good actually for a low-budget movie it had um, 
Christopher George was in the movie and it was kind of a backwoods hillbilly type movie I'm not going to give it away. I think you guys should check it out. It's a movie I had never seen before until this box set came out. But it, it was a fun watch. I really enjoyed it. It kind of felt like um, deliverance a little bit. That kind of the hillbillies in the in the backwoods, you know, that comes with the poster. I'm not going to pull that out. And then each of these um, Emory cases, I think there's two movies per set here. And we got... Mako, Jaws of Death, and The Naked Zoo. I haven't, I didn't dive into all of these yet, but I definitely will. There are some really interesting interviews you can pull up here on YouTube with uh, William Griffay. He's a, a very fascinating guy, and it's really fun to listen to him talk. And I'm looking forward to checking out the bonus features on this set, just to learn more about Griffay. Uh, this one, you get the Psychedelic Priest, and the hooked generation this one you get death curse of tartu and sting of death and this is the whiskey mountain i was telling you guys about and then it also comes with the documentary called they came from the swamp and i think it's like uh, two hours long the documentary did i see that right well, it doesn't give a time here in the back. I believe it's a very long documentary. And talk about the films that he made in the 60s and 70s. Got a little audience here again. But I think this is a beautiful box set. I'm really, really happy to have this one. And then it comes with a hardcover book. beautiful box set there's a there's Griffay I, I encourage you guys to just search on YouTube type in William Griffay interview and then just kind of check a couple of them out they're very very good he's a real down-to-earth guy um, he talks about the process that he used to go through to make these films and uh, his distributors would give him deadlines of like literally a week to shoot a movie and uh, and he would do it you know so you got to keep in mind though that a lot of these movies are very low budget and uh, but I think some of those movies are, are fun there's a certain charm to these these low budget movies these drive-in style films and um, I'm really, really happy to own this set. I'm going to pause it here really quick, put the stuff back together, and then we're going to move on. Okay, so we're back and we're rolling. Um, about a year ago, maybe a little bit longer, give or take, I can't remember, a fellow YouTuber and friend, uh, Donato Giallo, sent this to me as a gift. It blew my mind because this is a very rare and uh, pricey piece to collect, and I missed out. When they crowdfunded this, it's a documentary called In Search of Darkness, and it's about 80s horror films, and it's a, it's a must-own. It's a definitive documentary about horror from the 80s, and like I said, it blew me away. There's tons of interviews and uh, just all kinds of goodies in here that any fan of the horror genre would need in their life. 260 minutes, that's over four hours of material. Um, so the reason I'm bringing this up is uh, this was a gift that Donato sent me, and thank you again Donato if you're watching. I was able to get in this time to the crowdfunding for In Search of Darkness 2. The journey into 80s horror continues. And they threw in a, it's an enamel pin, which I'm not really uh, a collector of pins. So if anybody wants this, you want to trade for it or something, just let me know. But this is definitely a nice companion piece to have for part one now and part two. This one came in a slip cover, a slip box. There's only one entry point there. I usually call those slip boxes. Slip covers have the hole on top and bottom. That's just the way I, I call it. But uh, these also came with um, 
three posters. I'll show those at the end too because I got to stretch them out. They're pretty big. They're almost the size of a Screen Factory poster. But there's the disc. There's a reversible cover this time. There is a advertising card for In Search of Tomorrow, which I also helped crowdfund. And this is going to be a documentary about 80s sci-fi films. Really looking forward to that. Not sure when that's coming out, but it should be pretty soon. And then this one came with a booklet. You can see some of the uh, stars and horror icons that we've grown to love over the years, over the decades. And I'm really happy to have this. It, these are a little bit pricey though. I mean, it's, uh, I think these are, these were like 70 bucks a piece, which is a little bit high for me, but this also did come with a digital code for the soundtrack, which I have in my computer. And this one is 270 minutes, whereas uh, part one was 260 minutes. So this is a little bit longer even. It says it's packed with four hours of new interviews, clips, uh, including legendary icons such as Robert Englund, Nancy Allen, Linnea Quigley, and Tom Savini, many, many more. These are uh, these are good rainy day documentaries if the weather's you know crappy outside, it's raining or too cold or snowing, blizzard, whatever. Just stay in, be safe, pop one of these in. Have a good day. So that was that. I'll show the posters later. My buddy Todd Sheets, his new movie is out now and it's called The Final Caller. And you could crowdfund his movie or you could have, I, I did. I think that's over with now. And I chose to get the, this is like a big box. It's supposed to look like a VHS box and it's the Blu-ray DVD combo and it's also signed up by everybody and anybody who had anything to do with the film and I like to help support my friend Todd Sheets he's a great director and a very good down-to-earth dude hope to do a collaboration with him at some point I think he'll be available now that he's not as busy but here is the Blu-ray on top and then there's like these little uh, like cloth dividers and then there's a DVD underneath there I'm not going to pull that out so that was the blu-ray DVD combo in this little clamshell box I love it I think it's awesome and then I also got the VHS and this again it's all signed up by everybody in, in the film and then there's the tape so I'm glad to help a friend and get an awesome movie for my collection. So I did get a couple of, well, I got a, a, a childhood favorite of mine. My brother and I used to watch this movie so many times and we had a copy of this movie on VHS that we actually recorded from HBO. And the, the quality of that was pretty bad. And we, used to, we watched it so much that the quality only got worse. So I did upgrade this to DVD years ago, um, but I never did upgrade this to Blu-ray. But now, so I, I jumped from DVD to 4K and I popped this in and watched it and it looks absolutely beautiful. This movie never looked better. I don't know if it could ever look better than it does now. But it brought me right back to, when did this come out? 1986, I think. So I would have been about in sixth grade just to kind of show my age there. And my brother's a little bit younger than me. And we sat and watched this thing. I bet you we watched it 40, 50 times, if not more. And we could quote all the lines in this in this movie and just just going back and re-watching this and reliving it brought me all the way back to my childhood and it felt so good and it, and it looks beautiful. So I'm glad to have this in my collection. The Goonies on 4K. They're going to be doing a, I guess they're bringing back the actors 
everybody's on board except for the kid who played Chunk. He doesn't want to be part of it. But it sounds like everybody else wants to come back. And I'm not sure how they're going to do it because they're all adults now. They're all my age. And, uh, you know, it, that, that's another thing, too. These kids were about my age during this when this movie came out. Now they're my age now in real life, you know, so it's, it's going to be weird to see how they're going to do that. But I'm definitely on board, and I'll, I'll check it out to see how they do that. It should be fun. Maybe they're going to have kids of their own now, and the, their kids are going to be the Goonies and the Goondocks. Another show I really love is Rick and Morty, and this is kind of a comedic take on Back to the Future. Instead of being Doc and Marty, it's Rick and Morty. Uh, this is definitely an adult cartoon, though. There's a lot of adult situations. There's adult language. It's very funny. This is season four. I have all four seasons now. Um, it says here at the bottom, warning, uncensored. There, there is some pretty colorful language in here, so I don't recommend if, you know, if you're a parent out there to young ones, I would not let them watch this. But that's up to you. I don't judge. I mean, do what you want to do. I do have the code for season four. And I used to show that. I used to give the codes away here on my channel. I would just say, you know, whoever gets it, gets it. But nobody would comment that they got it. Nobody would say thank you. So I'm not going to do that anymore. It takes one guy to ruin it for everybody else. But if you want the digital code for season four, comment below, and I will get that to you. And I want to, that way I can make sure that it is being used and somebody's not taking it just to sell it or whatever. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really glad to have this. And th this is a hilarious show. I, I strongly recommend this. If you are not offended easily and you like adult humor, um, definitely check this out. It's very funny. It's not politically correct. So if you're easily offended, don't even bother watching this because you'll probably end up crying. But uh, yeah, for the rest of you, check it out. It's awesome. Um, let's get into, I'm pretty proud to show these. I've been picking these up lately. These are the limited edition tins that Anchor Bay released um, in the early 2000s, 2001, I think. Let's see here if it says it on the box. I want to say it was like 2001, 2002, somewhere in that vicinity, somewhere in that area. These are the limited edition tins. These are, these are brand new and sealed. These are very rare now, especially in this condition, sealed and, and brand new. Evil Dead 2 was limited to 50,000. I got number 2,036. And I like that they still have the little stickers on there. Includes a video game preview. I've been slowly picking these up, and I'll show you guys all the ones I have. This is Fulci's The Beyond. Again, it's sealed. Mint condition. This was a little more rare because it was limited to 20,000. I got number, I don't know why that's not picking it up. I got number 50,000, or I'm sorry, 5,027 out of 20,000. And this is my favorite one and the most rare. This is uh, Maniac. It's got that little sticker on there. I love that. It says two disc set. And it, this one does come with the soundtrack. This one was only limited to 5,000. So that's pretty ultra rare, especially new and sealed. I got number 3937. Another one that was pretty rare, this is Let Sleeping Corpses Lie, also known as The Living Dead at the Manchester Morgue. Sealed, this one was also limited to 5,000. I got number 2,831. I ended up picking up Hellraiser. It comes with Hellraiser and Hellraiser Hellbound, that's part two. And this one, I'm not sure what it was limited to, but I got number 24,440. So it's possible that this was either limited to 25,000 or 30,000, I would say, maybe somewhere in that vicinity. And then I wanted to show you guys something. I have a another Maniac, but this one is opened. And I wanted to show you guys something that I thought was pretty amazing in this set. 
I'm going to make myself a little room here and then I'm going to open up this tin. Try to do this all with one hand. Just to kind of show you what's inside some of these. Each one is a little bit different, but so inside Maniac, the lid came off and then you get a advertising card. And it just shows some of the advertising for um, you know, some of the, like the red light district theaters or drive-in theaters. And it just has different advertising for the film. And then on the back of the card, it has the chapter stops. And it came in a jewel case, and they all came that way. Like a little CD jewel case. And the there's a little swing tray, and this first one here is the movie on DVD. But what I thought was pretty amazing is the CD soundtrack is cut out to look like the shape of Joe Spinell's head, the maniac. And there you can see, I thought that's pretty amazing. I don't remember ever seeing that before. Maybe some of you have, I, I don't know, but I don't remember ever seeing a CD soundtrack or any kind of a CD that had a cutout like that. I thought that was pretty amazing. So I'm going to pause it now and I guess I'll show you the posters really quick and then we'll get into these figures and then I'll get into the Disney stuff and we will wrap it up and call it a video. Okay, so we're back. Um, it's been several minutes, but for you guys, it's only been several seconds. I put everything away. I want to show you guys the posters. There's three different posters that came with the In Search of Darkness documentary, part two. And this is the first one. I love how they have all the characters kind of jammed up in there in the uh, part two symbol. I think it's very cool. Second one, you get all the posters on the wall. You get the uh, family or friends, whatever they are, kind of gathered around the TV to watch some good old fashioned horror. And then the last one that shows a, a monster or a demon, whatever, hands coming through the walls and kind of like uh, Day of the Dead and Dawn of the Dead and Freddy Krueger and some reagent from the reanimator. So I thought those posters were pretty cool. I'm going to have to try to find a frame or frames for those, but the only thing is I'm running out of room. I really don't have anywhere to put those. Uh, let me pause it here and I'll show you guys the figures I got. Okay, so we're back to do the the next chapter in this video, which is going to be the figures I got. This first one is called Living Dead Dolls, Friday the 13th Part 2. And this is Sackhead Jason. And you can see that he's got his little overalls on, his flannel shirt, his sack. And then if you look in the bottom right hand corner, you can see the head of Pamela Voorhees. And you can see his Overalls are filthy, and he's got a couple of weapons there in the background. Looks like he's got a pickaxe, and I believe that might be all. Yeah, I don't see anything else in there. But I thought that was pretty cool. This is from Mezco Toys. Usually I'm not really into the cutesy kind of stuff like the... The bobbleheads or the uh, what are they called uh, Funko Pops I'm not really into that but um, I have doubles of A Nightmare on Elm Street these are figures called these from a company called Mego and this was a company that was around since the 70s they were around in the 70s I remember them and this is kind of pre NECA and they were owned by the Abrams family. And it looks like, uh, it's pronounced Mego. And the company was started by the father, David Abrams, in 1954. 
It's now owned by Marty Abrams. I believe that's him. And he's kind of uh, resurging or kind of reviving the line. And they used to make a lot of different characters back in the day. But uh, this is the Freddy version of that. I'm going to kind of go fast through these. This one is the 8-inch Dracula. And this one glows in the dark. Some of these are hit and some of them are miss. You're going to see that. I think they're fun though. Some of them are really cool and some of them are kind of like eh. Uh, here's Nosferatu and this one also does glow in the dark. I love the packaging. It just looks has that retro feel to it. That's the original Mego um, logo. I don't know if they tweaked it or not. I think I remember it being like that. They may have tweaked it a little bit from the early days. Here we have Frankenstein. I keep my figures boxed just because I like the I like all the different stuff, the artwork on the card on the back. Here is a Bruce Lee. He even has the the blood on his face and the blood on his chest. Here is Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Very, very nice. I think that's one of my favorite characters. I think they really did a, a bang up job on this one. Here's Regan from The Exorcist. She's got her little PJs on, her little bathrobe. We have the Invisible Man. There's his little potion, his glasses. Chucky. I think this one's pretty cool. I like this one. Werewolf. You got the the hair on his body. The ripped clothes. Presumably from when he transforms. And the last one for Mego is Frankenstein. This one also glows in the dark. And then I picked up a Michael Myers cloth figure. This was on sale on Amazon during the Black Friday sale. And uh, I think this figure was normally $39.99. And I I think it was $19.99. It was on 50% off. So I grabbed it. So I'm going to pause it now, put these away, and I'll show you guys my Disney stuff, and then we'll call it a video. Okay, so the last chapter in this video is the Disney stuff. I'll try to keep this short and sweet because I know there's, some, I don't know why, but some people out there just don't like Disney stuff. Um, but I happen to really enjoy the Disney films. And I collect them, and you'll continue to see them on the channel. But this is the 4K, uh, Ultra HD, and Blu-ray and digital code of the live action Beauty and the Beast, the Ultimate Collector's Edition. I have a little bit of a gripe, and I'm going to show you the next movie, and then I'll tell you my gripe. Next one is the 4K, Ultra HD, Blu-ray, and digital code of the animated Beauty and the Beast, Ultimate Collector's Edition. And do you guys notice anything missing from these two movies? If you said they don't have slip covers, they're missing. You're absolutely right. These were issued with slip covers. I ordered these directly from the Disney Movie Club, and they didn't come with slip covers. So I contacted them through the internet because you can chat with customer service right on your computer. And the lady, the young lady, told me that. Uh, 
they don't control how many slip covers they send out. It's kind of a random thing. And I was trying to explain to her, well, if I'm a Disney movie club member and I order directly from the movie club, shouldn't I be one of the first ones that get the slip cover? Shouldn't I be one, you know, isn't that part of the package? And all she told me was, if you're not happy with the purchase, we'll be happy to refund you. So then I would have to send the movies back. So now I'm kind of stuck in a hard place because I don't know if I just want to send these back and then go buy them again from somebody with slipcovers or if I just, should just try to hunt down the slipcovers for each one, which could be pretty pricey. Or maybe I won't be able to find them. Who knows? I don't know what I'm going to do. But I think if you're a member from DMC and you order directly from DMC, you should be one of the first ones that get the slipcover. That's my gripe. Anyway, let's, let's keep moving on here. I have the 4K... Ultra HD and Blu-ray and digital code of Mulan. This one did come with a slip cover. I have the Blu-ray DVD digital code of live action Mulan, which came with this slip cover. And I have the Disney Movie Club exclusive of Ice Age. Ice Age, Dawn of the Dinosaurs, and Ice Age, A Mammoth Christmas Special. And there's the Movie Club exclusive tag in the bottom left. I love exclusives, especially Disney. I like to get these little collector's pieces like this. And all in all, you know, I, I'm pretty happy with these purchases. I just wish that these two would have came with slip covers. But if you guys want to comment about anything, it'd be good to hear from you. I want to thank you for taking time to view my videos. I know there are so many channels out there. It's, it's amazing. And there's new channels popping up every day. There's so much good material out there. That's why I'm very appreciative that you choose to hang out with me and comment or give a thumbs up or whatever. Um, for Miss Hannah and Miss Heidi, I am your boy Todd E. Walnuts, and I'm going to wrap it up here, guys. I will talk to you soon. Take care, and hmm, how should we end this? Um, okay, so a, a quick recap of the Vinegar Syndrome titles I picked up over the last month plus and again a huge thank you to vinegar syndrome for helping me kind of fill in some of the blank spots in my collection but there is christmas evil nightmare sisters witch trap deadly games dial code santa claus don't go in the woods rest in pieces who done it fade to black and the alternate slip cover there is an alternate cutting class. There's one that I had already. Cemetery of Terror, Necromancer, the Beastmaster box set, and another cutting class. So if you guys have any questions or comments, you can leave those below. If you're interested in doing a collaboration at some point, let me know. I will be back with part two, so stay tuned for that. Thank you for watching. Take care.